All right, we're live. Hey. Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Global Citizens. Hey Annie, how are you doing? I'm doing good, okay. how are you? Fantastic. Okay, so uh, for the benefit of the, for somebody who just tuned in for the first time to this episode, yeah. So this is actually my third episode of Global Citizens. So the main purpose when I created this channel was because uh, when you move into a new country, you tend to not have any basic idea of what's going on. And when you are somebody who grew up as an expat or as a third culture kid in a foreign country, people tend to look at you maybe in a different way to a certain extent, or maybe you experience stuff differently. So, oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Sorry about that. So my name is Kelvin. I'm the owner and I'm the host of the show. And my guest for today is actually my good friend here, Miss Annie Chia. She is a Singaporean and she has been in fashion industry for seven years. Yes, an agent in fashion, fashion industry, take that. So Annie, uh, the lead is yours, maybe you can share a bit more about yourself. Yeah, yeah, so I'm here in Houston, Texas, and uh, you know, I, I was born in Singapore, beautiful place. Um, I moved around um, growing up as a little kid, like I moved to Colorado, San Francisco, um, and then I moved a bunch of places when I was over here in Texas. So, you know, growing up, like, I was always trying to find like identity of like what home is and home is not a place but a feeling and it's just like a collective of all the cultures that you bring together with you and um yeah so like with through fashion it's like a way to express yourself through the arts and um i find that to be like the pillar of all you know of, of who we are as humans the way we dress and the food we eat it's all a part of culture and it brings people together <laughs> All right. So, yeah, a, a career in fashion industry. Yeah? I mean, for any young ladies, it's definitely a dream for them. Somewhere down the line, maybe that they want to pursue this as a career. It's yeah. definitely not easy. And well, I'm a fashion idiot. The only <laughs> I'm lucky enough is that I every single one of my show, I get to wear a batik. So I at least I have something to cover up with that. Handy. So when and the only experience I know of fashion in real life is by w basically watching the Devil's Wealth Prada. So uh, maybe yeah. can you tell a bit more about how it's like for you? How has it been? Because from what I know, it is an incredibly competitive and a fast changing industry, right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, it's a new collection every single like every single three months, really. And um, yeah, so it's always constantly moving, constantly, constantly changing, changing. And so the thing is with like, so I also do marketing for uh, different fashion brands here in Houston and in other parts of the world. Um, and the main thing is just planning what is going to be ahead of like the season. So like, you know, you gotta always be looking forward. And nowadays there's so many like copycats out there. You have to really differentiate yourself as who you are as a designer or as a business owner. Otherwise you're gonna blend into the crowd and really there's too many of them out there. It's an oversaturated industry. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay. Wow. But seven years in. So what do you think have you have done differently that differentiate yourself? Because seven years is really a long time and just to let you guys for the audience know annie is only 24 by now that's a really <laughs> really so, young age so i started i started at I, I say seven years ago because i started as an internship um with one of my really really cool mentors i'm actually working with him now and i'm actually doing his marketing and matter of fact he's like literally two shots down from me <laughs> danny win and he's a really prominent what? now he's been he's danny win couture now, he's a very prominent um, fashion designer here in Houston and internationally. I actually just got back from Paris doing his show. And um, yeah, wow. I started with him when I was 16. So he's like, he's the guy who really like, taught me everything. Right? Yeah. And then I went, wow. to, I went to fashion school. I did a few projects here and there. But um, I really started when I was like 21. Um, and I did it for a season. And it was really successful because I sold every single piece that I um, that I made, and I had an overflow of like a lot. Of, basically, I had too many orders, and I had to like frantically get it together, <laughs> aka get your shit together. Can I cut? Sorry. 
No, you, you can even you can say the f word if you want to. I don't. This is <laughs> I, in my channel. I don't really care since I myself use it. <laughs> twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. You practically started like you are practically considered in a sense is like um somewhat seasoned in the fashion industry because uh -huh. five years and then you started doing it. Yeah. yeah. At twenty one, I just started my military service. <laughs> I just started my military service and That's at okay. the age of sixteen. I think I was a waiter in Singapore. I was serving in a banquet. Okay, <laughs> so that's, that's a okay. really, really cool stuff. That's okay. Uh, like I was yeah, working. Everybody has their start, right? I was working that internship and I was doing, um, and I was doing this oh. like job at the same time. So it was like right after school. I was like, this is my dream, man. This is this is it. <laughs> so, hey, you gotta make. Oh, there's a comment. Oh, hey, hey Rayson, Rayson, how are you, man? Hey, what's going on? What's up, Rayson? <laughs> how you doing? Uh, 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 yeah, so for those who is just tuning in, yeah, so we are with Miss Annie Cheer here. She's ex she's telling her experience in fashion industry, and later I will get to the part where she where I will maybe she will elaborate more on her life as an Asian American. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Growing up for 24 years of your life, oh, sorry, for one year you were in Singapore, yeah? So, I was there for like, yeah, how almost, is it like almost actually? Two years. Yeah, almost two years. Two years, right? Yeah, two yeah. years. Well, yeah, oh, uh, so, right about that. I, I am so sorry I miss okay. your I miss your farewell party. I'm so sorry I was in Indonesia at that time. That's okay. That's I'm okay. really sorry about I'm that. I'm going to come back to visit, and uh, you know, it's, we're only playing yeah. the way, so no biggie. I can always visit. Yeah, the ticket is expensive though. <laughs> you gotta make that money, baby. You gotta make it somehow. <laughs> Come on. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so when you first started doing it, though, uh, we growing up in an Asian community, yeah. Mm. The thing is, is that okay? So a trademark of my channel is that every single one of my audience will be given. I will email a question beforehand. Yeah. And there's one that I 100 percent. There's one question that's always the same. Is based on Hofstad six cultural dimension. So in in America, which has always been known as a heavily individualist, and it's always been a some a country that encouraged creativity. Yeah. And in opposite, in 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 Asia, which has always been heavily conservative. Uh, was was there any kind of resistance when you first started doing it? Maybe from you know, the industry itself, or maybe from your parents. I think knowing you enough, your parents is like, you know what? I don't really listen to that. So, <laughs> in the industry itself, maybe. Yeah. What was the challenge for you? Well, I mean, to be to be honest, like on my um, when I was a kid, like I was always like selling stuff, something. So whether that be chips or like t-shirts and uh, like I would basically draw on like a piece of paper, scan it and like do it up on like computer. And then I would like print it out into a t-shirt and like it would be just cheer. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would just be cheer. And I was just like, yo, like because, you know, my last name, like cheerful, that's where it came from. So that, yeah. that was like cheerful, <laughs> live cheerfully. That was like my first ever Instagram and everybody was like, oh shit, this is dope. And I was always selling something. And like for them, it was just like, okay, so you can make money. As long as you don't ask money from us, do whatever you want. And I was just like, oh, cool. Because I yeah. was not a smart kid. Like I can tell you right now, I was not a smart kid at all. I was like eating things and barely passing. Oh, come on. You're, like, you're not giving yourself enough credit. No, You're not getting yourself enough credit more. As a high school kid, I did not care. All I wanted was this. All I wanted was this. And yeah. like and like I was like, okay, you know, um, like and I, I and I was just like I was really as a rebel. I think they kind of like gave up on me. They were like, Oh, you passed, congratulations. Like <laughs> Wow. <laughs> no, but but I wasn't like I wasn't very book smart to begin with. So like it wasn't like they were expecting for me to be a doctor. And it was just at the point oh, I was, at the point like I got into one of I got I got accepted to one of the biggest um fashion schools in, here in the United States. But um I got like I got a half paid scholarship um 
but I would still have to pay the other half and live there out on my own. I chickened out, obviously, because I don't want to put my a mortgage on my own tuition. <laughs> Basically, a lot of college debt. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's so, common for all of us. Right, right. And it's just like, it's not worth it. But sometimes I look back, and I'm just like, damn, what 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 would have happened if I had I went? You know, had I met these people, you know, what 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 could happen? You never know because I never took the chance. So I'm just like, well, I'll work with what I have now and use that to my advantage. And it's been it's been pretty good. You know, I know it's been a little bit of tip, dips and turns here, but I'm glad that I took the route that I did because I've gotten to learn a whole lot more. Yeah. And oh, there's somebody who said, oh, hey, it's Chris. Hey, man. How are you? Yes, <laughs> damn weird well. watching the two of you chat lah. Hey, come on. It's like that, uh, you know. Oh. Uh, we <laughs> Back in, you know, Singapore, yeah. like that. Yeah, you. Like oh, that. she still remember the dad. Oh, she still remember the la lelo. La lelo, you know, Singaporean la, of course la. Of course. Yeah, you still have the accent though. You still have the accent, dude. A I'm glad you still have that. I've always got the accent one, always. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that accent, yeah. yeah All right. So, yeah. uh, okay. So, was this style of speaking carried over when you first moved to the United States oh, with yeah. your family? Oh yeah, or... most definitely, most definitely. I think it's something that never, never died in me because, like, even though, like, it was like everybody made fun of me for it, especially, actually, you know, nobody really made. I never really noticed that I had an accent until I like, came to the south which is Sugarland. I call it Sugarland because it's not really Houston. It's more of like a rural suburbs. Call it call it white America, if you will. You know, you got your Ouch. mom, your dad, your yeah. kids, nuclear family, pick white picket fence family. And it was really, it was really weird because there's kids like picking on me, like for being short, for being weird. I'm just like, why? Are you making fun of that? Like, I don't get it. Like, and then, like, they didn't want to yeah. sit with me in class. They, you know, they made fun of me. They bullied me. Um, and I just never understood it. Like, especially when I came to the South, because I was in California and I was in Colorado. They're more liberal parts of the, of the world. You come to Houston, you come to Texas, it's like they're a lot more conservative. And um, yeah, yeah so I was just like, okay, so I guess like, I'll try to blend in, but it didn't feel right. It was just like, I never, you know, really found my place here until I just decided I'm not going to give a fuck. Like, I'm just, Screw I, it. I'm, I'm not going to care. I'm Screw not going to care. I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm not going to care what you think. But like, by that time, like, it was, I was like, you know, trying to immerse myself into so much of like the pop culture at the time. I felt like, you know, I was like, who am I trying to become? Who am I trying to look like? You know, especially like yeah, I get where you're coming from. Space uh, for me. Uh, just for let for some people's information, yeah. So, <clears throat> a lot of us Indonesians people tend to say that we are we always try to slang when we are in Singapore. Just to let you know, the reason why is because my generation of Indonesians who grew up learning English, our main influence is bas basically watching American movies. Basically, all the Schwarzeneggers, all the Jean Claude Van Damme of the eighties. Yeah. Uh, that is our main influence of English growing up. So as a result, we tend to emulate the American's way of speaking. So, yeah, it's something that didn't go away. Even when we come to Singapore, especially when we have to adjust to the la le lo. And to me, it doesn't serve. Uh, to me, I in my older years, actually, it serves as an advantage since I'm 26. And, well, if I can't speak properly, people do not give me the respect that they feel. I'm lucky enough, I have a really deep voice, so yeah. it kind of makes it cooler, in a sense. Yo, <laughs> what's good? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you mentioned about Sugarland, which is basically in Houston, Texas, right? Yeah. All right. So this is like south of Houston, my, Texas. So it's like the outskirts of Houston. Oh, cool. OK. so. For me, who doesn't know much about Houston, there's only two parts that I know about Houston. is the Houston Rockets, which is the, N the NBA team. And the second part is that 
I will always imagine Houston is like to be a city located in between two hills and then everybody will be wearing 10 gallon hats and then they'll be saying howdy to each and every single one just that's, to greet them. That's Dallas. That's not Houston. Yeah. <laughs> no. Wait, they do that too. Oh, no. okay. Maybe no. you can. All right. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about what it's like in Houston, actually. Well, uh, Houston is very diverse. First of all, I'm in a tapioca shop right now. Look how dope this tapioca shop is. Like, let me just. Wait, that's a tapioca shop. That's a tapioca <laughs> shop. Like, guys, if you guys are listening cool. to this, tuning in to Houston, like, teacup, come on, come on down. We got happy hour. They're pretty fucking dope. <laughs> They're pretty dope. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, that, like this place has the bomb ass Taiwanese food. Man, when I tell you, like, it tastes just like Taiwan. Whoa! You can't, you can't, okay. get that. you can't get that, you can't get that nowhere else. Like, especially, it's especially like in in um, like in America. I, Houston is one of the most diverse cities. Oh. In the United States. All right. All right. Yeah, you yeah, okay, want okay. Indian food, you want you know, Middle Eastern, African, Vietnamese, it's all here. We even got La Madeleine if you want French. <laughs> Wait, what, La Madeleine? Seriously? Yeah, it's, it's called La okay. Madeleine. It's, yeah, but they, they have okay. French food, you know, they have all kinds of food here. And it's just like, there's so much diversity in this city alone, which is really cool. Oh. It's strange that it's like one part of the South when you get more further out of the city, like they become more conservative and EE and basically like very redneck, I'd, I'd say. Oh. Yeah, so we're the more, okay, country, okay. The more country. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's the that's something really new because I always thought that people in Houston is, would have, I don't know, survive on eating beer, on eating from steak and beer and stuff. <laughs> So, okay, variety. now Southern, we know. Southern food is really good. Southern food, like the culture of Texas in itself, the steak here, oh man. Like, like you can just sit here and eat like a meat brisket or like a, like a big old 12 uh, ounce steak. Oh, it's good. I can't eat beef though. <laughs> oh, yeah? I can't eat beef. Buddhist. I'm oh, a Buddhist. Good. I can't eat beef. Yeah. Chicken. Nah, yeah. Uh, chicken. Nah, chicken. Yeah, yeah southern, that's good. Food is a bar. All right. Uh, so, okay. So at least uh, for those tuning in, at least you now know that well, te uh, Texas, Houston, Texas is not something that you see in a Toy Story. Yeah. It, no, er, not everybody look like Woody. Beyonce is the Beyonce is from uh, Houston. Salute. Hey. Okay. Uh, I actually get to know you when we were in Singapore, right? So at that time, you were one of the co-founder of XX Creative Agency. So shout out to Nick. Uh, he better tune in. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna forward this video to him. Hey. Okay. So. <laughs> so. Okay. When you moved to Singapore, right? I believe at that time there was some personal stuff that's going on at home. So, uh, it's up to you if you want to get into that, but. For when you move into Singapore, did you do any kind of prep or to you it's like it's always been home. So you know what? I'm just gonna get home. I'm just gonna head home. Yeah. At it's that always time. been home. It's always been home. Like especially when you have it like deeply embedded in your memory. Like especially I come back so often. Like it's I can always go back to being a Singaporean, like if I want to. And I'll also like, you know, I used to have a Singaporean passport, I used to have IC. My blood, I'm still Singaporean, right? <laughs> and you, I have the Malay accent. I have the Malay you have accent. the Malay oh, accent. I, I'm Singaporean. What do you mean, no Malay? I don't know. <laughs> Malay, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's a Singaporean accent. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. I have a Malay yeah. accent. <laughs> Yeah, you try to imitate it. I'm, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. All right. No, my Singapore yeah, accent. Because the is thing is, is, this is how I talk. Like, I talk with my Singapore accent with my Singapore accent. I can, I can then switch whenever I want to. All right, all right. Nah, I mean, it's cool. Do you want uh, me to talk in my regular accent yeah. or my Singapore accent? <laughs> I'll just. Anything is fine, man. I'll just do whatever. Anyway, so when I was in Singapore, right? Like, um, 
I didn't do any kind of preparation because I didn't plan on being there for so long. Um, it just so happened that I found a really great opportunity um, there. And I decided, you know, I might as well get in touch with my roots. And basically at the time also, like I wanted a way to kind of find myself again in, in my roots, mm. in my cultural roots. Um, just a quick, like a quick summary of like what happened before I came. Um, my grandma was in the hospital. I got in, out of a really, really toxic relationship. And like, it was just, I was not in a really good place mentally. Like I was fine, like financially. I had a, I had an okay job, but like, I wasn't really happy with where I was. And I needed this kind of space to find who I am, like as, you know, as Annie, as cheer, you know, Annie cheer. And like coming coming back and giving myself that space to be around family and getting in touch with my cultural roots as a Singaporean really helped me like grow as, you know, professionally and in like in terms of in here and in here. And it's really important, especially like. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. I'm actually back in Indonesia because I felt the same thing. I was really feeling really burned out in Singapore and <clears throat> at that time is that I was unhappy at where I am. So when I was reflecting back, I always felt that because I spent 15 years in Singapore, I well, I grew apart from my parents from that time. So I felt it's also necessary for me to go back, to get in touch with my roots. And this is a literal root because there's a gigantic tree in front of my house and there's a bunch of cows and chickens outside here. I don't know what they're doing there, but yeah it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so yeah okay uh so when it comes to the thing is that is unique for an asian american is that i notice is that you guys always you guys are technically considered living in two different worlds right because you guys carry the you guys carry the value that asians tend to tend to encourage when we were young but in the method of interaction with people outside is that you guys are used to like, you know, like just chill out, just speak in the, just speak in a much more relaxed manner as compared to a much more conservative tone. Uh, was there any kind of difficulty for you when you were growing up? Like, was your parents was like, don't talk this way. You have to somehow, somehow, some this. I think I watched the show, the fresh of the book. I don't know whether it's really a true depiction of Asian American, but I think yeah. Jessica, the Constant Wu's character was saying is like, uh, the plates is called China is because we Chinese people respect the plates. Is that really true or no? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. But like basically, like there are certain quirks that I still follow today. Like, you know, when you have a bowl of rice, don't stick the chopstick in. That's how you, you know, get food to dead. Like, it's just some cultural things that I still keep in my personal life. Like, take your shoes off when you enter my house. Like, I just cleaned up this shit. Oh. Walk your dirty feet all over my floor. Like, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's just little things like that. And, like, it's just little bits of, like, culture that I keep. Like, family values, you know. Basically respect, right? Like, basically treating Absolutely. people with respect. And you, I think the more... Like, the, I think you're trying to get, like, basically, you know, don't talk to strangers, that kind of thing. Mm, yeah. Not so much because, like, especially working and, like, you know, the industry that you're in, like, just in general, you got to talk to people. But you yeah, you got to talk to people, man. You got to talk to people, but you also got to read people because not everybody you need to talk to. You know what I mean? There's, Absolutely. There are some people that are bad for business and, like, you just have to be really... Um, alert of like who you're who you're with and taking those traditional values into into consideration I think like absolutely um, my parents were of that traditional I'll be very honest my dad's uh, a Vietnamese American so he came when he was 12 uh, my mom on the other wow. hand she's, oh, uh, okay at least Singaporean. she's Singaporean Singaporean so like I'm half Viet um, okay yeah. okay so like okay so like my mom she's like she, she grew up in like you know singapore she um she basically like lived there so she brought more of like the uh, traditional buddhist um, values to the table and i think like absolutely i think like because they're both buddhist like a lot of it surrounded 
the general idea of like what respect is and like respecting people absolutely for who they are regardless of their background <clears throat> absolutely okay uh well, you mentioned uh, i'm glad you mentioned something regarding that have you ever heard what do you think is a bad advice whether in your industry or maybe as an asian american what do you think has been uh, considered a bad recommendation that you have ever heard that you in the end you may feel shitty about it mm. that's a really good question because <laughs> not I mean, we can all say the generic don't talk to strangers, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, <Okay. laughs> but I think I think I think the big one is don't do shit for free. Like don't oh, do, yeah. don't do shit for free. I think it's kind of true in a certain kind of light, but like sometimes you need to collaborate with other talents you know sometimes not everything is, is paid and that's okay um i think like when you do something for free like just even if it's a small a small bit like it's a gift to somebody it's whether that be your, service, your product and it makes them like oh this person's really special it's not just like they're just giving me something shitty for free they've actually put thought into this so it might be free now, but in the future, they're like, oh, I know this person, he or she's really good. You know what I'm saying? Like it builds relationship yeah. Especially when you collaborate yeah. and put the work and efforts together. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so from growing up in the two countries, though, do you develop any kind of certain traits that is your own, actually, or because there's no way you can you will just grow up in the US and then you retain everything about Singapore. And personally having lived in Singapore and Indonesia, there's some stuff that I just don't like. It's because maybe cultural differences or stuff. Uh, what have the personal traits that you think you have developed out of it that is your own originality? I think <laughs> I'm very I'm very blunt. Like sometimes too blunt. I yep. don't hurt other people's feelings. Yep. So, yep. Like, uh, as a friend of yours, I have no denial about that. I don't <laughs> think even Rayson or Chris or any of my viewers mm -hmm. here will disagree. Who knows you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Aside from. I'm very blunt. Uh, I mean, it's what we like. I know, Ray. Yeah. It's uh, it's what we like about you. At least you know what you wanted. You know what is right. What is <laughs> shit. So, yeah, yeah, you are honest about it. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Uh, maybe it, the thing is, is that like, let's say in Singapore, yeah, the thing is, is that what people tend to misunderstand about Singapore is that it's not like in Crazy Rich Asian, okay? It's not all of us are Chinese. It's, it's a mix it's of not. Chinese, Indonesian, Malay, Malay eh, sorry, Indian. Indian and Malay Eurasian. and Eurasians, actually. Yes. So when you are dealing with people of different, different culture, right? Yeah. So there's no way you can treat them in the same way. Like some people might appreciate if you're being straightforward, but there are those who doesn't like it when they, you are telling them in a straightforward manner. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It's nothing. So fun. how have you ever? ever <laughs> yeah. yeah. So have you ever like experienced any kind of failures though because of the different traits that you have on your own? Like for example, for being straightforward. Uh, in the end, you kind of missed out on something. Um, I wouldn't say I missed out. I wouldn't say I missed out. It's just like sometimes, like I give off like very intimidating vibes, and like it's yeah. a bit harder for people to open up to me. But like it's just basically like when they see that I'm real and I'm just like, hey, what's up? Like everything's good. <laughs> like they're. It's true. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Like it's just like sometimes like um, people who come from war shelter, they're a little bit more guarded, and I just have to absolutely. Like, work, I just have to work my way into that, and that's okay. And not everybody. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, you were finishing on your part. Sorry about that. Oh no! I was just like I was just saying not everybody's as you know as extroverted or like basically as open. I wouldn't call myself 
an ex extrovert per se, uh, but like I'm pretty open. I'm pretty open. Okay, my last question is actually, what three advices would you give to an Asian American young lady or even a young man who is about to enter the real world? Maybe they could be interested in pursuing something that what you're doing, or maybe they they have their own their own start. Uh, yeah. What is your best advice for them? Because the thing is, is that now in, now diversity is starting to kick in. Yeah. Uh, so like, for example, in Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're going to come up with their first Asian lead superhero called Sang-Chi, which is, I was reading it. It's like, it's basically a Bruce Lee knockoff or something. Okay. So, <clears throat> oh, wow. Asian. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So what do you feel is that? Because like, for example, I recall one of the issue you mentioned is that you were teased because you were shorter than uh, a typical height, or maybe is that maybe the way you speak is different. What would you recommend? Yeah. What three advices would you give to them? I'd say number one. So this is like basically young millennials entering the work world, like basically. Absolutely. Number one, just be true to who you are. I think that's really important. Like a lot of times we hear so much like outside noise of like what is normal, what you should be, what you should do, but really sitting down with yourself and having that conversation with nobody else but yourself is really important to clear out all the advice that everybody was, is giving you. Um, number two is like, never forget where you come from. Like a lot of times we can get big headed. Yeah, bitch, I just graduated from Harvard or Yale, but like, you know, if you came from, if you came from a humble beginning, don't forget that, you know, don't forget like, the stuff that you know your your parents has done for you or your 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 friends have done for you to get you to where you're at like don't be big-headed and egotistical ego will kill you ego absolutely is right. ego is will ruin you and your career if it gets too big-headed right um absolutely so being humble is, is a big one um and lastly it's just like just be open. Be open to try new things. Like I Absolutely. can't that enough. Like it might not be what you expected right now, but having that open mind that anything can happen can bring you so many, so many possibilities. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all my question. Do you have anything you want to say to the good people on the internet here? <laughs> hey. Or... The good people yeah. on the internet? do you <laughs> you know stay true to yourself oh yeah and uh you guys can follow uh, me on instagram <laughs> of course I'm gonna okay out. <laughs> uh no worries in your in my description box i put everything that can link to you from your linkedin to your instagram and even your podcast uh, on spotify come on yeah i watched okay. the I, I listened to the latest one. It's with Neil right? If I yes, yes, yes. I need to get back on my podcast. I uh, It's been really busy. No excuses, though. I can get back on my podcast game. Sure. Do that. Oh, yeah. One more thing, though. Yeah. All right. Uh, for this NBA season, how much my Lakers are going to trash your Houston Rockets? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, you want to play that game? I don't, I don't oh, yeah, know. That's awesome. I, don't that's <laughs> I don't follow right. basketball like that. I'm I'm a horrible fan. I just like, you know, um, Steve Curry. Yeah, hey. I just follow basketball players oh. because they're cute. Yeah, you can use the excuse you used to live in San Francisco, right? <laughs> True. True. I left my home right. in San Francisco. Steve Curry. <laughs> it's actually Steph, though. <laughs> Steph, all Steph. right Steph all right then uh yeah i think that'll be all for me uh yeah, yeah. maybe you wanna you wanna shout out anything it's fine because i've also attached everything that people can contact you with cool. and this is your facebook anyway so cool. yeah well i just right, then. shout out to you for inviting me on your show everybody here that's watching us Racing, Chris, what's up, you guys? And big shout out to Teacup. 
you guys come down to Tea Cup. I'm here. Like they are open till how how when are you guys close? At nine. Y'all close at they close at nine. They let me use this space. They're they're boba. If you guys are in Houston listening to this, they're boba. The bomb. The bomb diggity. Like it's so good. <laughs> so yeah, this, that's all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Andy. All, all right. right, I'll see you soon. Good see you, Mama. Bye. Bye. Okay, it's morning here. <laughs> hey. Well, you have a great rest of your day and wherever you are. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.